that I'm speaking right now on power thoughts. I'll be doing that today and again tomorrow, teaching people that they don't have to just think whatever happens to fall into their head, but that we actually can cast down a wrong thought and choose to replace it with a good, godly thought. Really, we become what we think. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It's impossible to tell people how important their thoughts are. And because our thoughts are so important, the main place where Satan attacks us is in our thoughts. The mind is the battlefield. Wrote that book 30 years ago, and it's still one of our best-selling books. And it's everybody. It's not just you. It's everybody. And so I talked about how we can choose different thoughts, things that you're having a problem with. You can choose to think what the Word says about it instead of what just comes in your head. And so in the book, Power Thoughts, we have 12 different power thoughts. I do want to just quickly read them again in case you weren't watching yesterday. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I will not fear. I can do whatever I need to do in life. I always have a positive attitude. I promptly obey God. I don't make decisions based on my feelings or emotions. I am very generous. I love to give. I'm very careful what I say. I treat other people the way that I want to be treated. I enjoy my life, all of my life. God meets all of my needs abundantly, and I am quick to forgive. So I'm going to not take the time to go over any other material that I went over yesterday. I want to start with the first power thought. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Now, you have to highlight in Christ. No man is righteous, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But in Christ, we are new creatures. And I like the way the Amplified Bible puts it. God views us as being in right standing with him if we have faith in Christ as our Savior. It's his decision. That's how he decides to see you. You may not be displaying all that righteousness yet. All your behavior, I'm quite sure, is not all right. I know mine isn't. But it's especially when we first give our life to the Lord, we have more bad behavior than we do as the years go by. God changes us from glory to glory, and that means little by little. And I want to encourage you today to enjoy the progress you've made and not be all down and negative about how far you still have to go. And that's what Satan will always remind you of, how far you still have to go. How many of you... Sometimes when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you think of is all the wrong things you did yesterday. Anybody besides me? Come on and help me. I don't want to be here by myself. So. Well, that's not God. Why? Because God says, let go of what lies behind and press on to the good things. See, there's good things in today, but if you're stuck in yesterday, those good things will just pass you by and you won't Enjoy them. Well, how can, I, how can I not feel guilty? How can I not feel bad when I did something wrong? Well, the Bible says to grieve over your sins. I'm not saying that we should say, oh, goody, I sinned. But what can you do other than tell God you're sorry? You confess it. You repent, which means you make a decision. Turn all the way around. I don't want to do that anymore. But God, I'm going to need your help. Now, to be honest, that doesn't mean that you never will do it again because you probably will, but you keep it up, keep it up. Keep it up is really a good statement. Just keep on keeping on. We inherit the promises of God as we endure the things that come against us. I mean, there are things that I fought with in my mind in the beginning that, to be honest, and I don't say this to sound super religious, but 
I don't ever have bad thoughts about myself now. And that was all I did in the beginning. All I did was think about what was wrong with me, what I did wrong, and all the mistakes I'd made in my life, and my wrong behavior, and things about me that I thought looked wrong, and everything wrong, 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 wrong. Well, you're not being haughty and prideful if you think about yourself the way that God thinks about you. Now, the Bible says don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to, but think about yourself according to the grace of God. So that means you can know that you're a good singer, but you don't take credit for it. You give God the glory. And even that, when someone comes to you and says, oh, you're a great singer, you can say thank you. You don't have to give them a humble speech. You just say thank you, but then you give that credit back to God. And as long as we keep God in first place, I know that I'm nothing apart from him, but in him, I can do all things. And in him, I am whatever he says that I am. No matter what it looks like, I haven't arrived, but I'm on my way. And see, God is never angry with you because you haven't arrived. Paul said that he was pressing toward that mark of perfection, but he said, I have not arrived. Yet one thing I do, it's my one aspiration, forgetting what lies behind. So you can't go forward until you forget what lies behind. Forgetting what lies behind and pressing. <laughs> See, there's a word, it's gonna take a little effort. Pressing toward the good things that are ahead. So 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18 says, if any person is in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and the new has come. So right away, then the devil says, well, yeah, if you're so new, why do you still act so old? Why do you still? And then you have to say, in Christ. <laughs> in Christ, get it through your head, devil. In Christ, it's in Christ. You say, do you talk to the devil? Jesus talked back to the devil. I can talk back to the devil, and so can you. When you're doing that, you're actually also talking to yourself. That's another way of renewing your mind. 2 Corinthians 5.21 was a lifesaver for me. He that knew no sin became sin. Well, that, that's worth stopping right there for a minute. Jesus did not just take on our sin. He became sin. I cannot even imagine how awful that must have been for our holy, precious Savior. He became sin. And literally, when he died on that cross, sin died. The Bible says in Romans 6 that sin no longer has any power over us. And I think the power of sin is condemnation. I really believe that's what gives us its power. Jesus has already died for all of our sins, past, present, and future. The forgiveness is already there. I don't have to beg for it, plead, promise I'll never make mistakes again. I just repent. I'm sorry. I don't want to be like that anymore. So I can't change myself. What can I do? I can study the Word of God in that area where I'm having a problem. If you have a bad temper, Studying on success won't help you. But you need to study on what the Bible says about anger. So he became sin so that in and through him, we might be viewed as being the righteousness of God in Christ. That is what we ought to be approved and acceptable and in right relationship with him. I don't even know how to tell you how many times I have meditated on and confess that scripture out loud. Because I have to go on to, th on to other things, I want to say to you that how you feel about yourself is probably one of the most important things in your life. Because no matter what God says about you, if you don't agree with him, it's not a reality for you. You're not what other people say you are. You're who God says you are. The devil may whisper in your ear, nobody loves you. 
Use your voice. Use your big girl voice, your big boy voice. <laughs> You're a liar. God loves me, and he loves me unconditionally. And God also causes other people to love you because he gives you favor. So we're not condemned, we're not guilty, we're not ashamed, but we're reconciled to God. The fact is you may not be doing everything right, but the truth is you're made right with God. See, facts are facts, but truth supersedes facts. I may be sick and coughing and hacking and have a sore throat, but in Christ, I'm healed. So that means I either get a miracle or every day I get a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better, and he's in the process of healing me. Your who, who you are in Christ is not based on what you do. Let me end this section with this thought. Why is it that we receive guilt and condemnation so easily from the devil? <laughs> and yet we have such a hard time receiving righteousness from Christ. Who is more reliable, the devil or God? God is. But I want to say that again. Why is it that we receive guilt and condemnation and shame so easily from the enemy? But yet it's so hard for us to believe that we're made right with God. Because Satan does not want you to ever know who you are in Christ. Do you know how many millions of people around the world march into churches week in and week out and they love God and yet they have no idea who they are in Christ? Matter of fact, Sometimes, by the time they get out of church, they feel more condemned than they did when they went in because all somebody does is preach against sin but never tells them how to be free from it. The next one that I want to talk about, I will not be afraid. Now, I didn't say I won't feel fear. I said I won't be afraid. Matter of fact, courage is pressing forward in faith when you feel fear. I always say when you do the right thing, when you feel wrong, that's when you're making spiritual progress. It's not doing the right thing when you feel like doing the right thing and it's easy, but when you press through the things the enemy brings against you, then you're making progress. I won't be afraid that I'm not acceptable to God. I won't be afraid that, I'm not, that God's not pleased with me. I won't be afraid of what people say about me. I mean, really, how many people let what they think other people think control them and what they think can't hurt you? If they think wrong things about you, that's between them and God. It's what you think about you that's more important than what anybody else thinks about you. Amen? And furthermore, when you begin to think better thoughts about yourself, you will exude confidence and people are drawn to confident people. If I have somebody helping me on a project and I can tell they're not confident, that makes me not be able to put confidence in them. If they're afraid they're going to make mistakes, then I'm afraid they're going to make mistakes because what we believe about ourselves comes through our body language and our conversation. Romans 8.15 says, For the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing sonship in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father, which literally means Daddy. That's the most endearing name you can call your father. Not father, not dad, but Daddy. Amen. Amen. And um, Romans 8.31 says, what shall we say about all this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be our foe if God is on our side? Psalm 118.6, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Well, what, what do people normally say? They say what they feel. I'm so afraid. I feel so afraid. 
I'm so afraid this won't work out. I'm afraid to do this. I believe God wants me to do this, but I'm afraid to do it. We need to stop voicing how we feel, and even when we feel that way, voice what the Word of God says. Truth over facts. The fact is I feel afraid, but the truth is I don't have to fear because God is with me. Even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear for God is with me. Now, you do that for 30 days. And I'm not, you know, that's not all you think about all day long, but let's say even 10 times throughout the day, you say, I will not fear. I'm not going to be afraid of man. I'm going to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And if somebody doesn't like me or, or gets mad at me, that's between them and God. I have to follow God. I will not live in fear. Amen? And I love this one. I am able to do whatever I need to do in life. Sometimes we're so afraid of life, you know, because life can throw us curveballs. I mean, things happen that we don't expect. And many times they're tragic and awful things. But we have such an amazing God that he can take something bad, something that is bad, and work it out for our good. I use the example from my life. I was sexually abused by my dad and several other men for years and years and years. And yet God has taken that, and I probably should say I had to give it to him. He doesn't come and take things that we're not willing to give up. And I had to give up blaming. I had to give up self-pity. You know, there was a lot of things I had to give up along with that but any time that we are willing to do things God's way, he will take any bad thing that happened and some way, somehow, he'll work good out of it. He will work good out of it. So I can do whatever I need to do through Christ who is my strength, Philippians 4.13. I have strength for all things through Christ who empowers me. I'm ready. I love this in the Amplified. I'm ready for anything I'm equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I love that. I'm ready for anything. I don't have to get up and be afraid of what's going to happen today. I'm ready for anything. God gives me inner strength. When you're determined to keep standing up on the inside, eventually you'll get up on the outside. Amen? Defeat that spirit of give up. Romans 8, 37 says, yet in the middle of all of these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. You know, God called Gideon to do something. And Gideon's response was, I can't do that. Wonder how many people miss their destiny because when God calls, all they see is the giants, they don't see God. All they see is what they can't do, but they forget what God can do. Amen? I remember the first time that God laid it on my heart to teach a Bible study where I worked. Invite all these people to come to a Bible study. I thought, well, they're not going to come. Well, every single person I invited came. When God determines something's going to be a certain way, then it is that way. And I said to the Lord when he told me to teach the word, I said, well, I don't know how to do that. I didn't know the word. He said, I know you don't, but I do. <laughs> See, if God's asking you to do something that you can do, <laughs> then you might want to question whether it's God or not. Because he seems to delight in asking us to do things that we're pretty sure we can't do. That way we lean and rely on him to do them, which is the only way that is acceptable to God. I read... This week, something that Watchman Nee said that I really liked. He said, anything that does not originate with God is of the flesh and is therefore not acceptable to him. I love that. Anything that doesn't originate with God. The Lord put it to me like this several years ago. Just remember, Joyce, what you start in the flesh, you'll finish in the flesh. You can't start it in the flesh and me come along and make it work out. It has to originate with God. 
So the angel of the Lord appeared to him, to Gideon, and said, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of fearless courage. <laughs> and Gideon said, oh, sir, if the Lord is with us, why has all these bad things happened to us? And where are all God's wondrous works of which our father told us? Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt, but now the Lord has forsaken and given us into the hand of Midian? <laughs> God said, called him a fearless man of courage, and he sure don't sound like that to me right now. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in this your might, and you shall save Israel from the hand of Midian. Have I not sent you? And Gideon said, O oh Lord, how can I deliver Israel? Behold, my clan is the poorest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said, Surely I will be with you, and you shall smite the Midianites, and you shall have victory. When God says you can do something, you can do it. You start to step out, there's fear. Then you say, I will not fear. How many of you can see that if you actually took the time, one year, to meditate on these 12 things, and they really actually became part of you, not just something in your head, but something that becomes part of you, how that could change your life. But you know, we find it hard. I even noticed when I said, going to meditate on each one of these for 30 days. Several of you went. <laughs> and I get it. You know, to be honest, I think we have too much available to us today. You can listen to six, seven sermons on different subjects in one day. And we don't learn something because we hear it once. We have to hear it over and over and over and over and over. Most people, when they get out of church, can't tell you what the preacher preached on. That's why getting recording messages and making them available to people is so important because you can listen to it every day and you hear something you didn't hear the day before. And then we've got the same situation with the 12 spies that Moses sent into the promised land to see if the fruit was good. 12 went in, 12 came out. 10 said, we can't do it, there's giants in the land. Two said, we can do it, let us go up at once and do it. 10 saw the giants and two saw God. Who do you see in your life, giants or God? See, God is bigger than any giant. Joel 3.10 says, let the weak say, I am strong. The next thing is set your mind to always have a positive attitude. Wow. To be honest, you could just take that one and it would be life-changing. There is nothing, 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 nothing negative about God. We have... We have a lot of problems in our world today right now. And to be honest, people talk about them too much. That's all it seems like anybody wants to talk about, so we just keep rehearsing it over and over. It's like rehearsing for a play, you know. I rehearse for my sermons. I think, like, I've been thinking about this for a week. And so, therefore, when I get up here to preach, I don't have to look at my notes much because it's become part of me. I didn't just throw this together this morning and come over here and hope I could wing it. And so we need to think about things over and over and over and over. And the more you think about something, the more it'll help you. So I started out with a very, very negative attitude. I was, my father taught me to be negative. He taught me not to trust people. He taught me to believe that I would always be disappointed in life. Well, to be honest, the things that you learn as a child, they're some of the most important things in your life and they sometimes are very challenging to overcome. And uh, so I had a very negative attitude and it took a while for God to change it but boy, I can't stand to be around negative people now. 
And yes, we have a lot of problems in the world, but you know what? People are afraid the world's going to end. Well, I say, bring it on. I'll get to go to heaven. Yes. I, you know, the only reason why I don't want Jesus to come back today is because of all the people that are lost that still need to, to know Christ. But as for me, I know where I'm going. And I'd be just as happy to get there sooner rather than later. So really, what do we have to be afraid of? You know, we don't really because... The place we're going is so much better than where we're at. Amen? Amen? So remember to always have a positive attitude about everything. And it will make such a difference in your life. Now we're offering this book, Power Thoughts. We always offer you the Word of God. I'll never apologize for that. The Word of God is what changed my life. And you can actually get this book today. You can get it for any amount financial offering that you want to send to the ministry. Obviously, don't send the smallest thing you can. Do the best you can, but in doing it this way, people who can't give much can still get the word, and then those who can give more can help make up for some of those who can't give as much. This has all the power thoughts in it, the whole program of how to get your mind renewed, and I think it will really help you. Thank you for being with us today. And please tune in tomorrow when I will finish up this teaching. God bless you.